speech number three is your informative speech about past speeches. This speech is five to seven minutes long. It's ungraded, so you don't need to worry about it the same way you might about a graded speech. But it's one of my favorite speeches because you have so many options as to how you approach it. I'm going to show you how it gets started. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to locate at least three speeches that you're interested in. Now these can be on the internet, including YouTube videos. For speech three. For speech three, yes. They can be on the internet, they can be in books, they can be in magazines, they can be anywhere you want. So, You're going to experience three speeches somehow. Then, after you've experienced them, you're going to write a critique of each one of them. You remember that the critique forms are over here. Critique of past speeches. You know that they're also on angels, so you're eventually going to be typing them up. So. We'll have three critique forms. Then the fun begins. Then you ask yourselves, what do I want to say in my speech? These three speeches can be all by the same person if you want, or they can be by three different people, or two can be by one and one can be, be by another. You choose who the speeches are by, you choose which speeches you're interested in. So when people first hear about this speech, some of them say, past speeches past, history, yuck. But you get to pick. Surely there's someone in the world now, even, whom you admire who has at some point given a speech. <coughs> so you pick what speeches you're interested in, then you write the critiques. The tr critiques will give you some ideas on what you might want to do in your speech. Every speech you ever give is going to have an introduction with three parts, a middle, as you know, with two or three or four main points, and a conclusion that summarizes and leaves the main point and leaves a, a final thought. You remember that. So once you've gotten this far, you can start creating your outline by developing your topic and deciding what the three, three or four main parts are. If you're pressed for time and you figure, hey, this is an ungraded speech, it's not all that big deal, I'm going to put my major energy into speech four and six, which are graded, you can decide on a very simple organizational principle, and that is point one is speech one, point two is speech two, point three is speech three. So when you're ready to do your speech, you say, you have your introduction, you have your conclusion, you say, I'm going to tell you about three speeches. I'm going to tell you about Lou Gehrig's farewell speech, I'm going to tell you about Susan B. Anthony's speech when she was fined for not, well, she was not fined, she never paid the money, but she was accused of voting in an election when she couldn't, and I'm going to choose the Gettysburg Address. So those are your three points. But you don't have to do that. You decide on the three points, then you start thinking, as always, what are my details going to be? Chances are you're not an expert on the speakers or the speeches. So in this speech, unlike speech number two, which is a demonstration of something you know, you probably need to do some research. I mean, it's obvious that you need to do research, whereas it wasn't in speech two. So this is where you do your reading. The speeches themselves are not readings. They are the basis of the speech, but they're not your reading. So let's say you're very interested in this one, and you want to spend your time giving three points about that. Your readings might be, well, let's say, reading one. You read an article in ProQuest. You read a magazine article, and you find something in the newspaper. Remember, you can use ProQuest for all of your resources if you want. Because ProQuest is not really a website. It's on the web, but it's a collection of print resources. So if you've got the secret code at home, you get into ProQuest and get thousands and thousands and thousands of things. Rebecca, you're not in. You know that. Right. So you do the readings, and you've got the basic organization. The readings give you things to put in here. So that when you're speaking, yes, Rebecca. So is that three citations for each critique? No. Okay. Three citations for the entire speech. That's a good question. People often ask that. Yes. Now, 
you may get so excited that you find yourself reading more things. When I was preparing for the demonstration I'm going to give you, I got very excited. I started reading books, and I'm still doing it because <laughs> the topic is so interesting to me. But you've got time constraints, obviously. So once you've got that, then you do the same thing you would with any other outline. You develop your introduction, which can draw upon these things or anything you want. You remember that in the book, in the natural speaker, it gives you a whole list of ways you can start a speech. You've tried some of those yourselves already. And you get your conclusion and the same idea. So that's the process for preparing speech three.